Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to another episode of Let's Jalia Wala. I have somebody very special to present to you today. Um, uh, he's been somebody who's spent 16 years in Pakistan and Canada. Currently a performance and results coach, uh, believes in human potential, has just come back, moved back to Pakistan and has great plans here. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to have him on the show. Uh, from the leadership, enterprise and technology paradigm, I place him strongly in the leadership paradigm and some part of his work in the enterprise domain as well. So he's helping individuals and institutions with the work that he does as a trainer, as a coach. Uh, lots of experience. Let's get going. Welcome Imad on the show. Thank you so much for having me. The minute you invited me, I was ready. Let's get to Jali Awala. Yes, let's so, do this. So let's do this. I like the action call in let's. I think that's that's the, one of the reasons why we picked it. So, um, Imad, the profiles and the uh, achievements and what all you've done, the timeline is all out there. It's on your social media and that's, that's how, you know, we sort of communicate to the outer world. But I want to get to the inner world. How does Imad define himself? What makes me tick? Yes. So, my name is Imad. I've, um, thank you so much for the warm introduction. Um, my life journey goes back 38 years. It's just tell you my age. But if you think about it, there's been so much transition in my life. Uh, and it was this journey of self-discovery which happened about, I would say, 10 years ago. And prior to that, um, I was an aspirational athlete. Um, I've always aspired to play sports at a professional level. And growing up, um, football was my first passion. Um, unfortunately, in 1991, that uh, failed. Um, and then I wanted to become a basketball player that failed uh, and then I wanted to become a professional race car driver and that failed and today I'm here living my best life and I want to share with you my journey. Oh, I love it how you can put it uh, put out your failures like that and still you know have a big smile on your face uh, but lovely from um, football to basketball to uh, wanting to become a, uh, a, a race car driver. A race car driver. Uh, I think I'd like you to touch upon this as we go forward, especially in the stories part. Um, so, so that's how you define yourself. Can you just tell us a little about your current work? I mean, in this journey, where are you at right now, and what is it that you offer to the market? So, I've been it's sort of part of my journey in terms of self-discovery. I've really delved into who I am, and here's my version. I am God's greatest creation. And growing up, I've been told this all my life and it never really meant anything to me. So about nine years ago, when I started this transition of self-discovery to know who I really am, this is after the failure of not becoming a professional race car driver. I wanted to know what can I do now that will give me that same rush, that same adrenaline. And it was a very, very difficult journey for me. I'll be honest, I may have experienced depression along the way, a lot of anxiety along the way because I was so fixated on becoming just a professional athlete. That was it. And through this discovery, uh, there was a lot of uncomfortable conversations that I had. And it just magically happened where through conversations with individuals and the life lessons that I never really paid att attention to before actually started to help other people's lives. And the response that I got really just gave me that, um, that buzz, that feel, that emotional connect the same that I had sitting in a race car. And that then transitioned me into this idea of helping people. And how I go about doing that is uh, another journey for sure. But that's what I wanted to do, is really to connect with people. It could be at any level from all walks of life. So long as you're human, you're my guy or gal. Wow, fascinating. So from, uh, and uh, what's the maximum speed that you would hit in your, in your race car? Over here, we work in kilometers per hour. Yes. But the speed, <laughs> the speedometer showed miles per hour, which was about 230. 230. So that would be exceeding well over 300. And you, and you are saying that you felt the same buzz working with people. It's phenomenal. It's, it's, it's you... what fascinates me in, in life now and where I am now is this idea of human potential. And not only have I experienced it with my clients, but I've experienced it uh, in life through books. I've experienced it in life through movies, um, through interactions, through observation. And I see that a lot of people have what it takes to just explode in such a positive way. And what troubles me the most is why are people stuck? So what I like to do is through coaching, through directed conversation, is really help people find who they are. And the minute they do, you're in a whole new game. 
Beautiful. So, what's um, how do you organize your day? What, what is it? What is everyday life? <laughs> well, everyday life. I'll, I'll, one word, joy. Because without joy in my life, it, it will be very difficult to transition through it. We all have 24 hours in a day, if you think about it. So how do we really effectively manage that time? And because I'm very clear about what my purpose is, what my mission is in life, I am clear now, FYI. It, this is uh, a long uh, time in the making, but my time came and I feel it. So I always wake up with joy, knowing that the rest of the day will be joy. So if you see me at 10 p.m. tonight, I'm going to be in the same exact mode because I'm just living and breathing what I do. I just believe in it so much. Fascinating. People do so much and yet can't experience joy. And and you, how have you arrived at that? Is is a big question. Uh, what is what is success for you? I understand your belief in people uh, and the joy that you practice every day. But how does Imad look at success? That's a very big word. And uh, if you Google the word success, the amount of options you're going to get are nuts. That's why I don't Google it. You see? <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning. Um, but you know, at the, at the core of it, and it may sound cliche, it's happiness. At the core of who you are as an individual, if you feel happy inside, you're, you're successful. What do I mean by that? When you begin to understand and become self-aware of who you are, you are able, able to live a meaningful and a purposeful life. When you're able to do that, you become fulfilled by the action of serving others. So for me, the act of service, based on the, the, the meaning and the purpose that I have for my life, is what drives me to happiness. It's crazy, it's a crazy feeling. And if you can't see the goosebumps on my face, um, it's there. Because it's, it's something that I believe everybody has we all understand the word happy, nobody ever feels it. And I want to get people there. That's just my, my whole mission, is, is, is that. And you've spoken enough about your belief, sort of hip, but, but if there's anything else that you'd like to say, your belief in people, you know, tell us more about it. Uh, because I mean, we're, we're busy judging, we have the performance evaluation systems, we have the big aptitude test, and constantly, whether this is the right person or not. And here's somebody who says, I believe in people. So what, where is that stemming from? And what does that belief lead to? It stems, it stems from results, you know, um, you know, I started off by saying I am God's greatest creation. And that is so true. But there are 7.8 billion people in this world, and each individual is God's greatest creation. And with that awareness and that humility, I believe that if one person can do something, another person can do it as well. And when we think about the, the belief around who we are as individuals, it really goes down to the core of what do you accept in life. And for me, an, there's an acceptance that people have what it takes. How do you try and navigate just or, or tweak that, that, uh, that wiring within people to start seeing things slightly in a different perspective will allow the, the, the light to open. So because I've seen it, because I've witnessed it, it's this, it's this um, unconditional belief that I have, and nothing is going to shake me now, knowing fully well. It doesn't matter whether you're an individual going through life, whether you're in a relationship, whether you're in an organization. Everybody has something to offer. I want people to know what that is. It's great. And, and to make this happen, to make your work happen, and to make sure that your beliefs find... Um, uh, find reality in this lifetime. How, what, what have you disciplined yourself against? You know, so when you have the day, when you look at your life, what are the things that Imad has to do, must do, and what are things that you completely discard? So, big disciplines of your life. That's also a very loaded question. I love your questions. <laughs> very loaded. Every We're question. trying to squeeze in everything in these 30 minutes. <laughs> every question, actually, you're right. And every question, I think, has a day's worth of conversation. Um, we can definitely pick each other's brain. You inspire me. Definitely going to talk to a whole lot of people and try <laughs> giving people the summary of, of what people like you have disciplined. And, and I think that's, that's great learning for the people who are watching. So for me, I think when you think about disciplines, you know, a funny story, and I'll get into the core of what I want to say. But I used to work the 9 to 5 job. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but if your heart's not in it, it's a bad thing. Um, timing is never um, a, a problem when it's connected with your purpose, right? So I was working a phenomenal job. So are you saying that if 
if I'm doing what I'm, I've really, really decided on, what I really, really feel strongly about, I could do it for as long as I like it. Absolutely. How long can you use your iPhone without charging it? So if you're not connected to your, your organizational mission, for example, if you're working a nine to five job, if you're not emotionally connected to it, then what's the point of doing it? When we think about disciplines, there are many, many aspects. But what got me started into becoming who I truly am was this idea of gratitude. And what I've seen is that we are, as individuals are not grateful enough. And what I mean by that is there's so much to be grateful for in this world. I mean, so it's limitless. There's so much to be grateful for, but we are so stuck in today's reality that we as individuals perceive that we never think about the, the things we should be thankful for. So I want to indulge you in a small activity that I do for myself personally on a daily basis. And this is this idea of waking up in the morning and the first thing you do after you say Bismillah rahman rahim of course, is think of three things in your life you are grateful for. And then I challenge you to do it over the next 30 days. But here's the key, that every day you have to come up with three new things so that by the end of uh, a month, you will have 90 things to be grateful for. And if your mind doesn't change by the end of it, I'll be very, very surprised because you'll be surprised by what you have available to you. And this is true. I mean, if, it, if you come down to counting your blessings and never ending, uh, what is the significance of bringing it to the conscious just out of curiosity? You because, know, I mean, people say, mm -hmm. yes, yes, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for life. I woke up. You know, but, you know, experts like you would always say, you know, count them. Well, Bring them to you. <laughs> In, no, I get what you're saying. I'm not an expert by any means. You know, if I consider myself an expert, there's no more room for growth. And I'm on this journey of growth. This is idea of perfection. And nothing in life is perfect except for God himself. And with that ideology, he's given us the power and the potential to strive for greatness, for perfection. And in that striving, you'll never hit it. So just knowing that you're still striving for it, you're always going to constantly uh, move forward. And for me, what I found is just shifting a mindset because I was, I was so um, blocked in terms of life is unfair for me because I wasn't able to become a professional athlete. It's not fair. And because I've closed my mind down, there was no way I was going to see anything around it. I didn't realize it at the time, but it was through this activity when the journey started of self-awareness, through this activity of gratitude and consciously thinking of new things, it changed my perspective in the sense that there's more to life than just driving a race car. Do I still want to drive? Of course I do. But I'll do it as, as a hobby. But it was just that idea that there's so much more to life than we should be, uh, uh, we should take for granted. But it comes to this point that you were sort of highlighting that people often say it, but they're not emotionally connected to it. You know, when you really feel, and you, you shared an example earlier before the interview started, you talked about this, this um, gratitude you will experience in others when it leaves. You only appreciate something when it's gone, right? So how can you make that feeling currently, not gone, but what would it be like if it was? Yeah. Fantastic. Love it. What do relationships mean to you? Wow, that's a loaded question. Um, relationships, of course, comes in many different forms. Um, but I want to share with you a story. And this was a story that goes back to when I was eight years old. And this is 1988. I was two then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Now that, now I've, so back in um, 1988, my dad, my mom, myself and my sister, we were all driving because back then I was in London, England, and we were driving to a place called Glasgow. And on this journey, while my father was driving and my mother was sitting in the front, my sister was sitting in the back, I was standing right in the middle. And because I was short enough, my head didn't hit the roof. And I was leaning. And of course, just casually uh, enjoying the drive. And back in the day, there wasn't any law per se that kids have to be buckled in. So um, I, I certainly promote that now. Um, he asked me a very, very profound question, which I found profound now, but at the time, it really didn't make sense. Abba ne pucha The usual. <laughs> <laughs> but he just asked me very casually, randomly, who is the most important person in your life? Now imagine this, an eight-year-old kid gets a random question, who is the most important person in your life? And you've got your mother and your father sitting here. I'm like, okay, is this a trick question? Um, and of course he said, no, no trick question, just tell me. So diplomatically, I said both. 
Um, and then, of course, he tried to nudge me a bit more. Then I went to my grandparents, my uncles and aunts, and then I got to my friends. <clears throat> and he says, Imad, understand one thing in life. And he said very, very clearly, and I remember it to this day, Imad, the most important person in your life is the person you are with. You will always have love for your family and your friends. But never forget where sincerity comes from. That you have to be connected with the person you are with in that moment. So right now, Omer, I'm with you. You are the most important person in my life. And though at the time it never meant anything to me, it just magically appeared the story when I was on this journey of self-discovery. And it just hit me. That the core of relationships, doesn't matter what format you're talking about, the core is sincerity. And if you understand that, wow. Ah, I was about to come to the stories and here is one that has come out already, but uh, tell us more stories that inspired, that have inspired you on the way. Oh boy. Um, okay, let me tell you a little bit about my racing journey. So I, I have, again, passion for sports. And the reason why I bring up racing is because being a patriot at heart, I'm a, a nationalist. I am just Pakistani, um, but at the core of being Pakistani, because I have an emotional connect here. And there was an opportunity that uh, was created called the A1 Grand Prix. So it was very similar in the format of Formula One, but it was slightly slower than what those cars were, but slightly less technical as well. And the concept behind it was really driven to promote a nation it was to promote the driver who is a national, uh, a national of that nation, and the the um, management of the team has to be national to that country. So it was essentially the World Cup of motorsport. So though I had a drive for motorsport, there was another connect which was represent my country, and that just and then I, I just started. You know, I so I had to sell a car. I had some um, um, uh, benefit from my family who supported me along the journey, but I tried to make ends meet to ensure that I was sitting behind the car and I was ready to go. And I got to the stage where I became the reserve and test driver for, for the country. And unfortunately, the series just completely took a dive, um, disappeared from the face of the planet. Long story, I can't get into it. But that crushed me to the core. I mean, race for your country and race and race, they just, everything just connected. And talk about depression after that. I mean, my whole life just came tumbling down. What do I do now? I was working office jobs. I was doing all of these things. And I just never enjoyed life. I'd love to get into the details of my journey of self-discovery. But it was the, the moment that switched for me was that emotional connect that I brought, that I mentioned earlier. It was this idea of what gives me the same adrenaline rush. And that adrenaline, <clears throat> that adrenaline I received when just casually somebody came to me just said thank you for helping me tell me so that that's and there's so many other stories i swear i would love to share it share it with you and we can uh, get into a long conversation about this yeah. but uh, i'd love to go and i'd give you another we have, i said three stories so you've shared two there's any anything else popping up um i think my my wife i'd love to sort of um, talk about the day i got married to my beautiful wife and um it was a very bollywood style <laughs> situation <laughs> Um, not the wedding per se, but how we met. And um, that took definitely a life change for me. And if I start to reflect back in terms of what that really meant for me, she has driven me to who I am today. She, I think, was that push. She was that breakthrough. Um, I don't know if she knows it the way I know it, but she has really made me who I am today. And uh, I definitely owe her. And now we have, mashallah, two beautiful children. So I'm going to start crying. <clears throat> but it's it's... You know how life just magically works out for you? Yeah. Um, she was the breakthrough that I needed in my life. And there's one word that she used actually not too long ago. I think it was about maybe about a year ago in July at some point where she turned around um, because I was constantly trying, just trying because I kept, I've started this whole, this whole um, video game on, on social media. Um, how do I express myself but be natural about it instead of stressing out in front of the camera? And she said one word, a few words to me. She says, Imad, you've only got one shot, so make it count. Oh man, did that change another game for me? So I think she Coming was definitely. From the life, it really does. <laughs> and like you've true. got one shot. <laughs> you've got one shot, yeah. and you've just got one shot. Now, everything I do, that's just the approach that I go. And if I didn't hear that from my wife, I don't know. I don't know where I'd be right now. But 
Um, definitely, yeah, she sped up the process. <laughs> One question that we keep hearing over and over, koi kitab bata de, you know, tell, recommend us a book. I tell people that they go to book shopping and they pick up books and pick up books and pick up books. But uh, what, what are the three books that you would recommend? Three books that have helped you tremendously? So, before I get into the books, I perhaps might recommend. Um, and the, the reason for those recommendations is more down to how it helped me as an individual. I think when it comes to books in general, I mean, there's so much information and so much knowledge out there, it's mind-boggling. And again, when it comes to the recommendation of books in terms of conversations with people, I would recommend something particularly based on perhaps what they may be interested in. Um, because when people really truly know who they are, they're more inclined to read something that is more aligned with what they want to do and, and who they are. But in this, in this context, I'll certainly answer your question. And I think uh, there are three books that definitely come to top of mind for me personally. Number one, I think is the first book I ever read in my entire life, cover to cover. Don't question me on anything else. <laughs> cover to cover was Outliers. Um, and that was by Malcolm Gladwell. And that sort of touches on this idea of 10,000 hour rule. And of course, there's a lot of principles and philosophies and perhaps uh, things I may not agree with. But there, there was the, the principle of it all really made a lot of sense to me. Um, the second book that I would certainly highly recommend because it certainly helped me get to where I am is this book called The Four Agreements by Ron Miguel Ruiz. Don Miguel Ruiz, and it sort of, it's a very short book, um, but it touches on this, uh, on, the, on the principles of how do you address self-limiting beliefs. So it's, it's becoming conscious about what's holding you back and how can you overcome those. And that is immensely powerful. Um, and the third book actually I'll certainly recommend is a book that I received from my dad um, about a week ago, and it's called uh, the, the Best Performing CEOs and organizations in Pakistan, and that's by Ijaz Nisar, I believe. And what I found fascinating with that book, and I've started to read it, a very thick book, yes. but what's beautiful about it is it's very short stories of individuals and organizations. So they're very easy, very quick reads, and it gives you a biography in terms of the context of who they are, where they've come from, and where they are now. And I just find it fascinating to learn about our local heroes and, and organizations. And I think Ijaz has done a wonderful job of so putting it all together. It's phenomenal, yes. phenomenal. It is phenomenal, we said at the same time. Um, brilliant. Um, uh, so, I don't know if I should ask your ideas on Pakistan or your ideas on Naya Pakistan. Do you really but, want to know my ideas? <laughs> <laughs> but you've come back and I've of course when, when people here, I keep hearing, you know, immigration want to go, finding opportunities, students want to just, you know, I mean, go abroad and not just for studies, but want to make a living there. Uh, for somebody like you coming back, please enlighten us. Your three ideas for Pakistan this point again a very very loaded question and I think a big part of the reason why I moved back was for Pakistan and you know by definition and by meaning what I understand is Pakistan is land of the pure we were founded on the basis that Pakistan is land of the pure and everybody has their own definitions of what that means and when you think about purity it's really just removing ourselves of all negative we are pure in our souls we are pure with each other we're pure as a nation and knowing that that's where we once were and that's why we started was my passion to come back because we can get there again. You know, I don't get into this whole idea of Naya Pakistan, though it, yes, we feel a certain buzz and a certain life about it. But Pakistan was actually built on three core principles. And we are very, very aware of it, very, very familiar with it, but not very um, consistent with behaving, behaving in, those, in, those, in, that, in that manner. And the three principles are faith, unity, and discipline. So what is faith? You know, if we are clear that Pakistan is land of the pure, are we all driven to that destination? And that's where those three principles come into play. Number one is faith, which is unconditional belief that it can happen. Then you think about unity. Condition, it's, it's a condition of harmony, condition of unity amongst all of us. And we're all in the common place and moving together moving to together a certain direction. Me, yeah. And the third piece is your discipline. It's, the, it's, it's a common, uh, it's a condition of conduct. Are we conducting ourselves to, our, to that destination? And if you think about it, as a nation, we already have what we have. Where we lack is at an individual level. How do we bring 212, 215 is debatable. 
the 215 million people in Pakistan together for a common vision. And that's what drove me. Fabulous. Unity fed this. You know, growing up in Karachi and, you know, reading the curriculums that we have, we keep hearing these words and, and just your interpretation of that is so powerful. Wow, great to have you back and I wish you great luck. Thank you so much. I think what you've picked up is what we need as a country. And it's fascinating, you know, from aspiring to be a sports athlete and not getting there and but moving on from there and yet looking back, reflecting upon it and what you did for yourself. Now you're doing it for so many. And with this clarity, um, I can see you doing wonders here. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank this you. This is Imad Rizvi. Uh, and Imad, we please, um, we'd like that um, uh, with, this, with this video going out, with this interview going out, we're also able to share your work, the work that you'd like people to look at. So please uh, do share the links and followers, please, please find Imad. He's doing wonderful work and sure in your journey. Here is an ex um, a car racing aspirational person who has turned his life around and is now out there to turn many many lives around sure you can find great wisdom from him thanks a lot Imad thank you thank you